Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to another video. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Christy. I'm currently following the WW Blue program, but on my channel, I provide points for all three programs and I also share calories as well. I would love to have you as part of the family. In today's video, I'm gonna be bringing you three easy pumpkin desserts. In a recent meal prep video, I did a pumpkin French toast and so many of you commented on that and said how much you like pumpkin. So I was so excited to get this video out for you. So these recipes are all dessert recipes. However, there is one, the last one that I'm going to do is something, honestly, you could have with your morning coffee. So the recipes I'm going to be sharing with you today are crustless pumpkin pie, pumpkin fluff or pumpkin fluff dip, and pumpkin bars. These are wonderful recipes to make at the holidays, wonderful recipes to make with your kids. They're super easy. So even though those are technically called desserts, I will let you know the pumpkin bars are great with your morning coffee. So let's head over and I will show you how easy these are to make. So the first recipe we're gonna be making is my crustless pumpkin pie. I made this a couple years ago in 2019. I made it the first time and I have actually since updated the recipe. So the recipe called for pumpkin pie spice and it also called for cinnamon, cloves, I think even ginger, which is basically the pumpkin pie spice. So I have removed those. It was just too strong of a clove flavor and my husband loved it but i just wasn't a fan so i have since changed the recipe and i'm only using the pumpkin pie spice so the points and the calories on this if you're following blue and purple it's zero and if you're following green it's one keep in mind as with all zero point foods you can't have unlimited amounts and have it still be zero so this is just for a normal size serving so one eighth of the pie it's going to make enough for eight. The calories in it are only 40 calories per slice. That is for the ingredients here. Of course, you can always top it with Ready Whip, which is what I usually do. I use some fat-free Ready Whip and top that on there. That's additional, but you can have up to four tablespoons for zero points. And four tablespoons, if you're counting calories, is only 10 calories. So at the time of this filming, it's October 2021, and I know WW is getting ready to change their program in November 2021. So the points that I'm providing today are based on the My WW points with the blue, green, and purple program. So if you're watching this after November 11th, I believe, is when they're changing the program, the points may be different, so just keep that in mind. So what you wanna do is take an eight inch pie plate, which honestly, I think this one might be a nine inch. If you don't have an eight inch, a nine inch is fine. So spray it with some cooking spray. Also preheat your oven to 400 degrees. Now we're gonna take a bowl. In the bowl, we're gonna crack two eggs. And then we're just gonna lightly beat the eggs. Now I'm going to add a quarter teaspoon of salt. I'm using some Himalayan pink salt, but you can just use regular salt. Quarter teaspoon of that. Then we're going to take the pumpkin pie spice and I'm going to put in, you can put two to three teaspoons depending on how much you like. I'm going to put probably a little bit over two, maybe like two and a half, although those are pretty heaping. Just depends how much spice you like in them. The next thing I'm going to add is a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Then I'm going to add a half a cup of brown sugar replacement. So normally I like to use a Lacanto monk fruit sweetener and the kind for the brown sugar is called golden. This one is classic, but I didn't have any of that. So I am using Swerve. If I can't find the Lacanto or I haven't ordered it off of Amazon, then I use the Swerve. So this is the Swerve brown sugar. So I'm doing about a half a cup of that. If you like it sweeter, you can also add like a quarter cup more of the sugar. So in fact, I'm gonna add just a little bit of the white sugar as well. The next thing we're gonna add is a can of pumpkin. Make sure you're using 100% pumpkin, not the pumpkin pie filling. So it needs to be like Libby's 100% pumpkin. This one is Publix brand pumpkin. Great value has one that looks like this, 100% pumpkin. So we're gonna put the whole can in there. 
And finally, we're gonna put in one and a quarter cups of unsweetened almond milk. All right, then you're gonna stir all that together until it's nice and creamy. Okay, after that's all nice and stirred together, then just pour it right into the pie plate. So this is gonna be crustless, so there is no crust going in there. So now this is going in the oven, but it's going in a 400 degree oven for 15 minutes only. Then I'm gonna turn the oven down to 350, and then I'm gonna let it bake for about 50 to 60 minutes. You just wanna bake it until a toothpick or a knife in the center comes out clean. So it just depends on your oven. My oven usually takes about 55 minutes. So it's been 15 minutes on the pie. Now I'm gonna just bump this down to 350. And then I'm gonna set my timer for, I'm gonna set it for 50 minutes and check on it. And then like I said, it takes anywhere from 50 to 60 minutes, just depending on your oven. All right, pie is done. Let me get my Q-tips, Q <laughs> not my Q-tips. Let me get my toothpicks and we're gonna put this in here. And that is coming out pretty clean. It's got a little bit on there, but I don't wanna bake it any longer. I had mine in for 50 minutes, so that just tells you. I mean, it just kinda of depends. So now I'm just gonna set that aside and let that cool. And then that's gonna get cut into eight pieces. So you can see what it looks like. It is basically the insides of a pie. So you can cut that into eight pieces. Now something you could do if you wanted is you could take that eighth of a piece and just kind of push it into a little pie crust here. These little mini pie crusts. These are four points or 100 calories. Uh, something you could do is just take one of these and crumble it up on your plate. Or <laughs> another idea is animal crackers. So. These are my grandson's animal crackers. I lied, I eat these. <laughs> um, <laughs> they are my grandson's, but I do love animal crackers. So you can actually have five of these for one point. Whoop, and I just dropped one right in there. <laughs> so what you could do is just crumble these up into the bottom of a bowl or something and kind of use those as a crust and then just put your piece of pie right on top of it. Or just crumble these up over the top as well. And then of course, Ready Whip. I like to use fat-free Ready Whip on mine. I use, you can have up to four tablespoons for zero points of this. And if you have four tablespoons and you're counting calories, it's only 10 calories for the four tablespoons. So I'm gonna set that aside and then I'll put it on a plate after and show you what it looks like. Okay, so the pie is cooled down a little bit. So I've went ahead and cut it into eight. And now I'm gonna show you what it looks like. The only thing is it is a little bit hard to, because it doesn't have the crust, you have to be very careful. But as you can see, it keeps its form even without the crust. I've got it on my scale because I wanna put some fat-free Ready Whip on there. So for four tablespoons, two tablespoons is five grams. So four tablespoons will be 10. All right, well, that's nine. So there we go. Okay, I didn't have my light on. Whoa, I guess it's still warm. That's still pretty warm. <laughs> the, the Ready Whip is falling right to the side. So like I said, if you're on blue or purple, this whole thing, zero points. One point for green. And if you're counting calories with the Ready Whip, it would be 50 calories, because it's 10 for the Ready Whip, 40 for the pie. Right, next up is a recipe called pumpkin fluff dip otherwise known as pumpkin fluff this recipe is from tidymom.net 
But I will say that there are a ton of different pumpkin fluff recipes out there. So I'm gonna use this one. This one just has a few ingredients in it. I am gonna make a few minor changes though because it does call for one, one and a half ounce package of pudding mix. And the pudding that I have is just a one ounce. So because of that, I'm gonna lower the milk. It says use a half a cup of milk, but I'm just gonna do a quarter cup of unsweetened almond milk. So for this one, it's so simple. We're gonna take this sugar-free, fat-free pudding. I'm using butterscotch, but the recipe says you can also use vanilla. Uh, my husband loves butterscotch, so he's really gonna like this one. So we're just gonna put that whole package of pudding in there. Then I'm gonna add the unsweetened almond milk. I have almost a quarter of a cup. I think I'm gonna put just another little splash in there. And then just gonna mix that up. It's gonna make it's gonna be thick. Now I'm gonna add a whole can of pumpkin. So again, make sure it is regular pumpkin and not pumpkin pie filling. And we're also gonna add some pumpkin pie spice. We're gonna do about one and a half teaspoons. And then give that all a good mix. And you wanna make sure this one is all mixed together because then the only thing we have left to add is Cool Whip. Okay, so after that's mixed all together, now we are gonna take this whole container of fat-free Cool Whip and we're just gonna fold that right into it. All right, so after that's all stirred together, now this is gonna go in the fridge and just chill for like an hour. <laughs> that sounded funny. So now that that's done, that just goes in the fridge and just let it chill. That's it, that's all there is to that one. So let me tell you, I tried this and this is really good. If you have ever tried the chocolate mousse that I make with the two point pudding and the Cool Whip, it is kind of like that. It's got that consistency of like the mousse-like texture, but it just tastes of pumpkin and pumpkin pie spice. This is really good. The points and calories on this are two points per portion. So this makes about eight. The recipe says it's about half cup portions. So that's it, two points. And then the calories are 97 calories, the way I made it. So things you could do with this is maybe dip some apples in it. Something else you can do is like with the pumpkin pie, you can make little mini kind of like pumpkin mousse pies. Just use these little pie crusts. Again, four points or 100 calories. Something else you could do, again, animal crackers, five animal crackers is one point. So you could just crush those up on it or even use them. Use some animal crackers and dip in it. So many different things that you can do. When you taste this, you'll have a lot of different ideas going through your mind of things you can do with this. one we're going to be making is something I have made before. I actually have an old video from back in I think 2019 where I made this but the video is really bad. It was one of my first videos so I figured I would go ahead and refilm this. So this is a pound dropper recipe and these are one point sheet pan pumpkin bars and I'm telling you I made these two years ago and these are really really good. The points on this are one point for one or three points for two. And then for the calories, it's 54 calories for each one. So she does have some notes on here as well 
as far as there's a cre cream cheese swirl that you swirl into it she said the points are the same with or without and that if you want to do a 9 by 13 you can but that it'll be thicker and you want to increase the cooking time to 35 to 40 minutes and then it talks about different size um, you know if you cut them into different size pieces how the points are but I'm gonna I think I'm gonna probably just do the 36 I think that's what I did the last time I made these for this one there's a lot more ingredients in this one but it's really easy to make so what you want to do with this is you want a big sheet pan this is going to bake on a sheet pan she suggests a 10 by 15 or an 18 by 13 I have a 10 by 15 so what we want to do first is just take the pan and spray it with cooking spray and then we're going to set that aside You want to make sure to get along the sides of it real good because these are going to go up the sides and you want your oven to be preheating to 350 degrees okay so now I've got one of my red bowls and I actually have it on my scale I'm gonna weigh out my flour the reason being is in her recipe she says to make sure to spoon the flour because you know how flour can get packed down in there you don't want to end up using too much and it'll change the consistency so I need two cups so on my package here I don't know if you can see for a quarter cup is 30 grams so I'm gonna multiply that by eight so I need 240 grams and I'm using this bag. I have flour back there in my container, but the flour that I use in there is for the two ingredient dough. It's self rising flour. So you need all purpose flour for this recipe. All right, we are a little bit over. Okay, so there's our two cups of flour. Next, we want a teaspoon of baking soda, two teaspoons of baking powder. And then we want about half a teaspoon of salt, two teaspoons of cinnamon, a quarter teaspoon of ground cloves, and then three quarters of a cup of sugar substitute. So I'm using the last bit that I had left of the Lakanto monk fruit sweetener. So three quarters of a cup of that. Actually, we need three quarters of a cup, but then we're also gonna need another third of a cup for the swirl that goes in on the top, which I do have that set aside. So I had just enough. I'm actually a little bit short here. Okay, then just stir that up until it's all combined. Now we're gonna add a can of pumpkin. Again, make sure it's not pumpkin pie filling. Make sure it's just regular pumpkin. one cup of unsweetened applesauce and then we want four lightly beaten eggs so i'm just going to put the eggs in a bowl first and just beat them a little bit okay then the eggs are going in there And then we're just going to stir that all up until it's combined. Okay, so make sure that's all mixed. So I had some pockets where the powder, the flour was kind of stuck in pockets. So once that's all mixed, then get your prepared pan. And then just pour that right into the pan. And then just spread it evenly around in the pan. So now if you just want it like that, you can just go ahead and bake it now. But who does not want the cream cheese icing? Now we're just going to set that aside. Now we're going to take another bowl. To this bowl, we're gonna add eight ounces of one third less fat cream cheese. Now make sure this is room temperature because otherwise it's gonna be kind of chunky. So you definitely want it room temperature. So I don't quite have eight ounces. So I'm just gonna put that in there 
And then I was gonna add some of this, but I just noticed this is out of date, so I need to get rid of this. So keep in mind, I'm only using half of what you need for the cream cheese topping. So you really need eight ounces of the cream cheese, and then you would need one third cup of the sugar, and like I said, I'm using Lakanto, any zero point, but since I'm only using half of the cream cheese, I'm just gonna use half of that sugar. And then you would need two tablespoons of unsweetened almond milk or skim milk. And again, since I'm <laughs> not using the full eight ounces of cream cheese, I'm just gonna use one tablespoon. And finally, an egg, which I can't use a half of an egg, so I'm just going to put the whole egg in there. I think the cream cheese was a little bit over four ounces anyway. So now, just mix all that together. I'm just going to use this. It's got some pumpkin on it, but that's okay. We're going to uh, mix this right into the pumpkin anyway. It's going to kind of swirl it around in the pumpkin. So just try to mix that up so that there's an, it's not real chunky. So as long as it's room temperature, you should be able to do it. But if you don't have it completely room temperature, then it's really going to be chunky. You may want to put it in the microwave. All right, so once you have that nice and smooth, then get the pan again. Now we're going to take the pumpkin batter and we're going to take the cream cheese batter. And then if you want to use a knife, you can. I'm just going to use this spatula that I was using. And then we're just going to pour that right over top and then just kind of swirl it into it. So I don't even have to tell you how good these are. Uh, like I said, I made these a couple years ago and I love them. The only thing that I made today that I didn't know the taste of was the fluff and that is so good. So all three of these are fantastic. Okay, now that is going in a 350 degree, I don't like the way that looks. So you can kind of do the de designs however you want. I like to make it a little more swirly. All right, so that's going in a 350 degree oven for 25 to 30 minutes. And then after that, we're just gonna cut this into 36 pieces. Okay, so these are done and I've cut them <laughs> into 36 slices, but they're not very even and they were still a little warm, so the cream cheese was kind of pulling. So I really should have let these cool. So let these cool first before you try cutting them into the 36 pieces. So, but this is to give you an idea that's what they look like. Hopefully it's focusing. These are delicious. Now, one good thing with this pie, this, you can freeze this. So my husband and I will not eat all of this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna freeze some of this. I'll freeze half of it, and that way we'll have it for Thanksgiving. So what I can do is I'll wrap it in like some saran wrap. I'll just set it on saran wrap, wrap it in that, and then wrap it in some aluminum foil over top of that. And then just make sure to set it in a place in your freezer where it's not gonna get squished. So that's all I'm gonna do with that. And then this fluff, I'm telling y'all, this is so good. So here's some ideas. I have one that's just in a pie shell. You could put some whipped topping on that if you want. I have one here with just some crushed up animal crackers, one point worth. And if you have kids or grandkids, then of course keep the animal crackers whole. I know my grandson, he's probably gonna stand them all up in here, however he <laughs> wants to do. So let them have fun with that. And then the pumpkin bars, these are just good the way that they come out. So they're cooling down a little bit better. So good. I mean, it's just like a, it's, they're like, it's like pumpkin cake. Just so incredibly good. So just a couple notes about those. The pumpkin fluff in the shells, amazing. Those are so good. We absolutely love those. Of course, you're going to have to count six points because you're counting four for the shell plus two for the fluff 
so worth the six points. Also, the pumpkin bars, I would suggest putting those in the fridge because of the cream cheese mixture. Since they do have cream cheese, I would suggest keeping them in your fridge. They actually, when I made them before, keeping them in the fridge really holds their form. And honestly, I think they were, I think I kept them in there for almost a week and they were still just as good. They were still moist. And like I said, they were great to have with breakfast coffee. So if you like this type of video, then stay tuned for future videos because I am working on another video with apple desserts. So thank you all so much for watching and make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. If you're new, I hope you'll subscribe. I'll talk to you in my next video. I'm Christy and I'm planning us healthy. Don't you know that you're beautiful?